1995, a historic court case changed the face of football forever. A then little-known Belgian midfielder, Jean-Marc Bosman, successfully won a case against his club, RFC Liege, who blocked his desired move away from the club even though his contract had expired, rewriting the football rulebook in the process. His successful fight, in which the European Court of Justice ruled that clubs no longer had to pay transfer fees after the expiration of a player's contract, came to be known as the Bosman Rule and has facilitated some of the biggest moves in the game. So how did all this happen? Jean-Marc Bosman played for Belgian side RFC Liege and was reaching the end of his contract in the summer of 1990 after a two-year stint. The club offered the midfielder a new contract, which was slashed by, get this, a whopping 70% from his earlier contract as he was no longer a registered first-team player. Your guess is as good as mine, he refused to sign the contract and was put on the transfer list with a fee of approximately 500,000 euro. After searching for a new club for a while, he finally got an offer from French second division side Dunkirk and was ready to leave. However, the French club failed to meet Liege's transfer demands and the deal collapsed. Liege suspended Bosman for the entire season. The Belgian transfer rules applicable at that time allowed a club to suspend a player when both parties could not agree on a new contract. He was left stuck. This prompted the then 25-year-old to head to the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg, where he sued the Belgian outfit for restraint of trade. Before the Bosman ruling came into place, a player could only leave at the end of their deal if the club agreed to let him go on a free, or that club received an agreed fee from a buying club. The ruling and its impact. Bosman sued the Belgian FA, RFC Liege, and later added UEFA, and a five-year legal battle came to an end in December 1995 as he won the battle, a single moment in football history that changed the whole transfer window system and the nature of player movement. The landmark ruling also altered the relationship between players and clubs in Europe, specifically the transfer market, free agency and league restrictions on international players. It completely changed the way footballers are employed, allowing professional players in the European Union to move freely to another club at the end of their contract with their present team. This also meant players had leverage to demand huge signing-on fees and salaries from new clubs to make up for the absent transfer fee. Some players coming to the end of their contract can also ask for more money from their current club who would fear losing that player on a free if demands were not met. For some, the ruling meant soccer stopped being a sport and became a business. The power was taken away from the clubs and given to the players. It opened the path to some of the big clubs to keep getting richer, disadvantaging the lower clubs who couldn't match their spending. In his 2015 book, Leading Sir Alex Ferguson, stated, once the European Court of Justice ruled that clubs no longer had to pay transfer fees after the expiration of a player's contract, all hell broke loose. Suddenly, it was a free-for-all. The ruling also gave rise to agents and other middlemen who saw a loophole where they could make a kill. They have since made it a big business and are becoming more prominent and powerful in today's transfer business. What else changed? How was it before the Bosman ruling? Prior to the ruling, teams across Europe were prevented from using more than three foreign players in any continental squad, while also having to include at least two that had graduated through the club's youth ranks. After the ruling, though, all this changed, and teams were free to play as many European Union players as they wished to. The only restrictions that remained were on non-EU footballers. Some of the top players to benefit from this. The years that followed saw the rule facilitate large moves from teams in smaller markets, and it was only but the beginning. It's been going on since, with the transfer markets getting crazier by the year. Paul Pogba is the recent big-name player to leave on a free transfer, despite having cost Man United an arm and a leg a few years ago. In fact, this is the second time he is doing it to the club, having first left for Juventus in 2012. We can name many more of such deals, Robert Lewandowski's move to Bayern Munich from Borussia Dortmund, or Michael Bollock's move to Chelsea in 2006, and you can throw in the likes of Edgar Davids, Patrick Kluivert, and Brian Laudrup. None, though, exemplifies this ruling better more than Sol Campbell's move across North London from Tottenham to Arsenal in 2001. The defender earned a reported £60,000 a week, plus bonuses, and a signing on fee worth around £2 million a year. What a signing he was, though. Some players have also forced teams to sell them or risk allowing them to walk on a free at the end of their contracts. Robin Van Persie's case, for instance. 
Arsenal were forced to sell the Dutchman to rivals Manchester United as he was entering his final season at the Emirates and was not willing to sign a new deal. Well, we know how this move turned out. Back to Bosman. Whatever happened to Bosman? Bosman's playing career was over the moment he started the case. He was banned by the Belgian Federation for not signing Liege's cut-price contract, and most other clubs avoided him, and you can't blame them for that. He, however, had short stints at St. Quentin and St. Denis in France, and also featured for some several lower league clubs. The Belgian was eventually awarded £312,000 compensation package in 1998, but his career having stalled earlier, the compensation did not help much. He has since struggled with alcohol addiction as well as depression. Clearly, many benefited from his battle more than he did.